For a lot of people, merchanting is a daily activity to earn some extra money to get more out of the game. They tend to think from flip to flip with the occasional investment in between. As you start to acquire more wealth though, it becomes increasingly important to think about the longer term. I already made a guide on long term investing, but how do you manage your wealth for the longer term? More about that in this video. Hey guys, it's Divine for Merch.com. As I mentioned in the intro, this guide is mostly for the wealthier, more experienced merchants. I'll talk about four things in it. The benefits of managing your wealth, how to manage your wealth, how I did it in 2016, and how all of us can do it in 2017. So why would you manage your wealth? It all depends on what you want to get out of merchanting. If you're just in it to make a bit of money occasionally, then this is probably way too serious for you. If you really want to try to earn as much as possible, then this is one of the major factors that makes a difference between a merchant who occasionally does a good investment versus someone who is consistently outperforming others. If you don't manage your wealth, you're mostly grabbing any opportunity you see. While you will occasionally do well, you're not planning ahead, which means you'll often have all of your cash in certain items, while another better opportunity comes up and you miss out. This evens out uh, the great profits that you just made in your investments and basically makes you mediocre in the long term. Now, the goal of managing your wealth is to prevent this and make sure that you're making as much profit as possible in the long term. This sounds pretty vague, so I'll explain you how to do it. In my eyes, there's three aspects to managing your wealth. The first and most straightforward is making sure that you can always quickly have some cash available for interesting investment opportunities. This means that at all times, it should be easy to sell off a small part of your investments. I'm not saying that you should hold cash at all times because that's just a waste, but try to keep it on items that you can quickly sell off. I also spoke about this in the long-term investing guide as one of the factors that you need to keep in mind when you're going to invest in something. Now, you only need to be able to sell off just enough to buy one or two limits of an interesting item that may pop up as this gives you enough time to try to sell some other things as well to free up more cash so you can invest more. If you want to jump on opportunities to buy discontinued items, then you obviously need a lot more cash in easy to sell items, because otherwise you just can't buy those. And this automatically excludes a huge amount of possible investments with that cash. You won't be able to sell off 500 mil in scrimshaws as fast as 500 mil in rocktails, to give you a random example. Now, the more items you're invested in, the easier it'll be to sell off the least profitable ones and replace them with more interesting items. The ideal situation is in the mix, which is more challenging, but also more rewarding. The second thing you should do is looking into your personal goals. If you want to get a skill to level 99 or 200 mil XP, because that's the new 99 these days, then you need to factor that into your investment plans. It could also be a personal goal to own a certain rare or to hoard a certain item. Try to avoid going for these goals the moment you can afford them, because you'll be left with no cash and you'll basically have to rebuild from scratch, which slows you down insanely much. Try to spend money on your goals when there are no interesting updates coming up and not right when you can make a lot of profit by using that money. Speaking of updates, that leads me to the third aspect. The third thing you should do is planning for the year ahead by making an overview of all the upcoming updates and when they'll come out. People first started doing this for bonus XP weekends. After the first three or so, we knew that the weekends would be done twice a year around the same time, and thus people freed up their cash to start investing for them months in advance. Knowing when updates would come out used to be an insane differentiator, like for years this was the one thing where you could just consistently beat other people and rake in huge profits. But since Shyx is now telling everyone months in advance what's going to happen to keep us all hyped about the game, it's easy for anyone to see any future update coming. This makes it even more important to keep track of them. It went from being a competitive advantage to a must. I heard nowadays there's even people giving advice on what to invest in at the start of each month. Crazy times. Anyways, here's how to make an overview of all the upcoming updates. I'll take 2016 as an example. At RuneFest 2015, Jagex announced their plans for the updates for 2016, which I made a video about back then. While the announcements are never set in stone, they give you really a lot to work with. They announced the following list of updates, and what I did was creating a timeline of when I expect these updates to come out. I also posted this timeline on the VIP forums on Merge, so it's not just something I'm making up now, it was actually out there. So I hope some people used it well. I first planned the things I knew about for sure on this timeline, 
It was, for example, certain that we would get the invention update in January because Jagex already announced that. It was also certain that God Wars Engine 2 would come out at the start of the year, as they also mentioned that, and it would be accompanied with side updates uh, that were focused on the lore and some XP stuff. So we knew the side update for that month as well. It was also certain that we would get a bonus XP weekend in February and in September. We knew that Invention Batch 2 and Raids 2 would be planned towards the end of the year. Then we know about all of the holiday events like Hati and Skull, Chinese New Year, Easter, Halloween, Christmas, and a beach event. We knew there would be some month in which we would get overwarded with XP, like all the Mad May or Road Trip stuff we've had. And the rest was completely out in the open. Jagex told us about their new approach to launching updates, like one big update accompanied with a few smaller ones every month. So I split the remaining updates between large and small updates. And that left me with 12 large updates and 12 small updates. Then I did separate NXT here because it wouldn't be worked on by the content teams and thus it could be released in the same month as a major other update. And then it was a matter of putting the rest of these updates on the timeline of 2016. January obviously got Invention, the 15 year anniversary event and as each year Hattie and Skull. It was super obvious that February would have the first God Quest because otherwise there would not be enough time to spread them out over the rest of the year. Then the side updates would be Bonus XP Weekend, the Chinese New Year, and the inevitable fixes to Invention, at least I assumed. Then God Wars Dungeon 2 was going to be announced pretty early on in the year, so the next best option was March, uh, combined with those side updates I already mentioned. Then it started becoming more important when each of the three content teams with four large updates each would be releasing their next update. The team that made Invention in January was going to release the updates for April, the team that did the God Quest in February would do the updates for May. The team that made God Wars Dungeon 2 for March would do the updates for June and so on. There is also only one team that will do combat and bosses, so that made that part pretty predictable as well. I knew for example that the team that did Invention would make the Vampire Quest because one of those developers like already talked about it on a stream and stuff and kind of inherited the project. So I put the Vampire Quest on April along with Easter and NXT. In May I expected the next God Quest along with some Mad May update where we'd get XP for breeding or whatever. I wasn't sure what the side update would be at this point, or if there even would be one, but after Invention was released in January it became clear we would get an update to the Invention tech trees. Now in June it was the turn of the combat team again, so I expected the solo boss. It was too early for most of the small updates that were left on the list here, so I put the random fun quest in that spot, which I changed to the 15 year anniversary quest. After it turned out they didn't release this in January. Then in July I put the new landmass, which was later filled in as the Eastern Lands and alongside with it the Port Serene rework. August was actually the first month where I was not quite sure what update would come out. It was the turn of the team that made the previous God Quest, but I wasn't entirely sure if we'd get it. I did know the side update would be the beach event and maybe the Corporal Beast hard mode which ended up getting scrapped, but yeah here I wasn't sure. Then September would logically seem get Invention Batch 2 and the Bonus XP Weekend, October would get Raids 2 and the Halloween event, November would be the Mining and Smithing rework and the other fun quests that they mentioned, and December would get the final God Quest and Christmas. So as you can see the first half of the year went great and pretty much everything was on point, the second half not so much. As the year progressed, Jagex cancelled Invention Batch 2, Raids 2 and the Mining and Smithing reworks. So the first half of my timeline was accurate, but after that I had to readjust it. Still, this meant that I could look ahead for the upcoming half a year with a lot of certainty. I went all in on Invention for January with side investments for Bonus XP Weekend in February. Throughout February I shifted part of my wealth to more Bonus XP Weekend investments. Part to gear and supplies for God Wars Engine 2 in March, and part to rares. According to my timeline, April and May would not have any interesting update investments, so I went all in on rares starting in March, which turned out quite well. In May I made some investments for the solo boss that would come out in June, and I revised my plan for the rest of the year considering all of the cancelled updates. If I would not have planned ahead, I would have probably invested far too much in bonus XP weekend like everyone else then I would have probably been too late for God Wars Dungeon 2, and then I would have messed up to start investing for rares in time. Now this would still have made me a lot of profit, so that's not a problem, but the way I anticipated it now went far better. 
I also know some other people that use the same flow who did really well. So it's not just luck that I had or anything. It actually was the best path. So how can you do this for 2017 for yourself? We already have a list of updates again that was partially announced at RuneFest and partially from polls afterwards. Soon Jax will also start talking about the future updates in live streams, the website and various other places. So try to plan ahead for 2017 on how you will manage your investments. Spread the updates out over the year, define during what months there won't be interesting merchant related updates like quests, and keep in mind that there will be some unexpected side updates that could be interesting. Then you can determine when you'll make your money flow from one market to the other, when you can train certain skills or buy certain rares. Try to make that plan for yourself. I'll do the same for next week's video, and then we can compare our plans and discuss the results so we can come to the best final overview. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned some new stuff. I'll see you next week for the follow-up video. Take care, guys.